what's up gangsters i know i've made a tier list video for catchers previously but i felt like i based it way too much on their attributes rather than how they performed in game and if you don't know what i mean by that what i mean is that some cards are high overalls but they don't perform like those overalls or their attributes display inside the game meaning that a card might have 100 power but for some reason even if you square up the ball it just never leaves the yard as opposed to a card that might have 50 power but for some reason each and every single time you square up the ball he's just hitting home runs or his swing is a really good swing and then the high overall cards swing is a really bad swing so this time around we're gonna start off with honorable mentions and then work our way up to number one and I feel like this is gonna be a good list as well because it's gonna go ahead and allow you to work on your next catcher or whichever catcher should be next for your team and if you already have the top dog then you know you have nothing to worry about for the time being Now we will also update this list as the year continues we're gonna make a playlist for this and we're gonna call it the positional tier list playlist so if you're ever looking for this just click on the channel click on playlist and you will find it now let's start off with the honorable mentions so number one in honorable mentions is going to be JT now JT he's a great contact hitter his power leaves a little bit more desire than usual but his fielding his defense in general is what really helps him out and keeps him as an honorable mention the arm strength at a 93 you're gonna be able to gun runners out the reaction at a 77 his pop time isn't gonna be the quickest in the world but it's still going to be one of the best pop times that you can get for catchers currently the only downside to jt unfortunately is that he's a right-handed only hitter and then when you have a left-hander on the mound he doesn't have as much pop as you would like to but righty on righty he's going to kill it i think he's a very good catcher and if you got him right now it's a solid pick but there are catchers that i personally believe outperform jt and will give you more of a bang for your buck considering jt is roughly 20 k stuff now the second honorable mention and this might be surprising to a lot of you is going to be yermin mercedes now yermin he has plus three to all his attributes because i got him at parallel three that's how much i've played with him and i think that in terms of hitting this catcher is a lot better than jt to be completely honest with you all and that's why i play some higher than jt in the honorable mentions because at catcher you really look for a good hitter yes you want someone that can gun a runner out etc but being completely honest with you all the way that throwing out runners works in this game even if you're holding down triangle as the pitch is coming or after the pitch comes for some reason it just doesn't always appear so i generally don't try to focus too much on the arm strength or the defensive side of catchers because fielding is not important blocking is not important reaction is the only important attribute as well as arm strength and if the meter isn't popping up with button accuracy then you're screwed regardless so i really focus on hitting i think yermin mercedes regardless of whether you got a righty or a lefty on the mound against you he's going to be able to take it out and he has a really 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 good swing so this is a card you can get for free for doing tops now moments i have him as my second honorable mention now coming in at number five is going to be kiebert ruiz why is he coming in at number five well look at the hit attributes the hitting attributes are amazing another big thing about him is you get him to parallel two and he's gonna have 80 power against lefties if you guys don't know the threshold to hit a home run on a perfect perfect fly ball unless the field has some crazy dimensions is 80 power that's a guarantee home run if you get a perfect perfect fly ball so you parallel him up to two he's gonna be able to hit dingers no problem parallel him up to four and his contact versus left is gonna hit an 80 as well the high contact is crucial because as you get onto the ladder difficulties the contact is what dictates how big your pci is the vision is what dictates how big your outer pci is but if you really want to square up balls you need high contact you need high power and ruiz does exactly that not only that but he also brings a little bit of defense in his game as he has good arm strength not the greatest reaction but reaction will do and then besides that 49 speed for a catcher is never bad he's a switch hitter which is the biggest plus and he also has a good swing in the game so if you get a switch hitter that has similar stats to yermin mercedes and then has a better arm than yermin mercedes i just don't see how you pass that up he's also free to get from doing tops now moments if you have the opportunity to get him make sure you go ahead and do so now coming in at number four and this might be surprising to a lot of you he was number one on my previous video but in this one he's going to be number four yes 
This is, when you look at attributes, the best hitting catcher inside the game. In terms of fielding, he has the same arm strength as Ruiz. And in terms of reaction, he has the same reaction as Ruiz. So why is he placed higher than Ruiz? Well, clearly, if you look at the hitting attributes, he's a lot better. Now, the downside to Mike is that his swing is horrible in the game. It's a swing that's a little bit longer, and it takes some time to get used to. So if you're a new player, I highly doubt unless some way, somehow, you just really know how to work your way into swinging later or earlier than usual in order to make that swing effective it's very difficult to adjust yourself to Mike Piazza just instantly it usually will take you a couple of games for example if you look at this I've had 12 at bats with him I'm hitting 333 but at first within my first like eight at bats I was hitting 167 so I'm starting to learn that swing it's gonna take a couple of games after you got a couple of games down then yes it's gonna be great but for the time being I don't think his swing is too great and as you get into the latter difficulties with the pitch speeds going up up and the fastball you having to react in the blink of an eye a player having a bad swing is not going to be very beneficial unless you have mastered that swing so that skill gap in terms of mastering him is what drops him down all the way to number four coming in at number three is gonna be Adley Rutschman Adley Rutschman has great contact his power numbers are good enough and then his arm strength at an 85 his reaction at a 75 those are two humongous pluses plus he's a switch hitter with good speed at 54 I don't I don't think there's really much more you could be asking for in a catcher if you were to make a cap this would be similar stats or similar attributes that you would have on your cap to be completely honest with you all so in general i like him a lot switch hitter has a good swing everyone that i know that has used at lee rutschman have said good things about him have said good things about his swing so i don't know how you can go ahead and pick him up and actually regret picking him up in general i think that the orioles in general when it comes to this game they have two of the best catchers when it comes to the top three so let's go on coming in at number two yes the brand new world series reward matt weeders i think that this man when it comes to the arm strength and reaction i mean it's difficult to get better he's the best one when it comes to the cannon and then when it comes to reaction if not the best one he's going to be probably top two in terms of catchers so his pop time is going to be great then you look at the hitting his contact versus left and power versus left are both very appealing he has that 80 threshold that you need he's a switch hitter but as you get into the latter difficulties unfortunately if there is a right hander on the mound you're going to struggle a little bit more because that 67 contact versus right is low but the power on it is great because if you square up a ball it's most likely leaving each and every single time instead of you getting a weak single or a base hit or a double or anything along those lines because the power will overpower that contact attribute and it will primarily focus on him hitting with power despite you swinging with normal so him being a switch hitter is a humongous plus you'll always have the advantage when it comes to facing either a right hander or a left hander and most of the great bullpen arms in this game besides like rich gossage or oldest chapman primarily is a left-hander so bringing in matt weeders against him or having matt weeders against a this chapman with 117 contact versus left it's gonna give you a big pci and a bigger chance to go ahead and make contact on the ball that's why he's number two now coming in at number one is going to be the yankees collection jorge posada now yes Jorge Posada does not have the best fielding attributes. 70 arm strength is similar to Mike, it's similar to Ruiz, but listen, the arm strength is good enough to get by. The reaction out of 65 is good enough to get by. Why you pick up Jorge Posada is because of both of those contact attributes. 118 contact versus right. The majority of good pitchers inside MLB The Show 21 and most likely every single MLB The Show for the rest of our lives will be right-handed pitchers. So him having that big of a PCI is going to be very appealing and very helpful. Now, yes, his power numbers aren't exactly great, but Jorge Posada has something that Matt Weeders and Ali Rushman have as well. But Jorge Posada just has a much better one, and that is a swing. Jorge Posada's swing is one of the best swings in the game. 118 contact with 73 power. You're going to be squaring up balls, and they're going to be leaving the yard. Not only that, but you can bring a lefty against Jorge Posada, and he's still going to have a big PCI. He's still going to be able to crush the ball, and he's still going to be able to lift it up, especially if you get him up to parallel one, where he will have 
80 power versus left it doesn't matter which side he's hitting on he's gonna be a home run threat and he's gonna be a threat to make contact with the ball difficult to strike out as well especially with 81 vision so those are my top five if you did end up enjoying today's content please make sure to go ahead and hit that like button or subscribe button turn on the channel notifications follow me on all my socials that way you will get notified whenever i do go live and then if you would like to become a member of the channel feel free to do so by pressing the link inside the description or that join button next to that red subscribe button have a blessed day and night stay positive stay safe stay blessed and i will catch you all in the next one peace out